Statements made by United Traders, UT, or its members are opinions and not investment advice. UT is not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided. Improvements are not guaranteed. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs, and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned on UT. All right, guys, welcome to the channel. So today we are going to be hosting a live lesson on Fibonacci drawing tools and how you can use them properly. If you are listening in on YouTube, feel free to jot down any questions that you have in the chat window. We will try our best to answer all your questions at the end of the lesson. So just a little bit of information on me. My name's TJ. I started United Traders with a goal to demystify the capital markets and help people just like yourself build long-lasting wealth. I use a combination of fundamental and technical analysis to provide event-based, data-driven trading ideas. I started my journey as a financial advisor at one of the top big five banking institutions and soon found my way working in equity research and as a portfolio manager. I specialize in the U.S. equity markets and I have been involved in the equity markets for just over 12 years and counting. So what makes our community unique is the way that our members work collectively with a combined goal of making a generational shift in financial literacy and an abundance of wealth. After all, that is why you guys are watching today. We do this by taking a holistic approach in educating our members about personal finance, portfolio management, hedging on certain times, psychology, risk and trade management, which ultimately will result in our members reaching their financial goals. So there's a ton of stuff that makes UT great. We offer a long list of free resources, but to be honest, the true value of United Traders is something that needs to be experienced more than it can be listed. But here are just six things that make UT what it is today. And if you are looking to join our community, best thing to do is joining our Discord community. It is free. There is a link on the bio. And don't forget to follow us on social media for more amazing content. It would be greatly appreciated if you guys could help us out by spreading the word to all of our followers. And that being said, I'm not going to bore you by reading out this full disclosure. However, I will mention that United Traders and or its members are not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided today. Trade at your own risk. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned at United Traders. All right, and last but not least, I want to introduce you guys to John. So. Most of you guys probably know him by my takeaways. Now, John will be conducting the lesson on how to master Fibonacci drawing tools and incorporating it into your trading arsenal. He is currently working at a financial risk management firm. And John is a master at volume price analysis and has been trading for just over 18 years. Fun fact about John, while Martha Stewart was in jail, John bought Martha Stewart stock, which is MSO, at around $11, and was able to um, net more than 25% before she came out of jail. And John, I'll let you take over the stream, and go ahead when you're ready. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm going to share my screen. Are you able to see it? Yes. Good. Um, so this is the default setting because the only thing we're going to be talking about focusing on today 
um, are the use of Fibonacci, uh, what I, let's call them drawings, because in thinkorswim, that's what they're defined as. Um, how is a Fibonacci you know, ratio derived? Um, Fibonacci was uh, an Italian um, mathematician. Uh, he's considered one of the most talented mathematicians of the Middle Ages. If you guys have ever seen that funky looking spiral thing that looks kind of like a, a cross section of a, of a conch shell that's been cut open. Um, it's all about the theory that uh, the ratios recur over and over and over again. Um, you guys can actually look that up on Google. You don't need me for that. And if you really want to know who Fibonacci was, et cetera. Um, but I have about an hour to teach you how to utilize the tools and where to place the high periods, highs and period lows. So um, if you want to look into that, that's great, uh, but it's not really necessarily going to help your trading. <laughs> but the theory behind it is everything operates in a certain sequence and a ratio. Now, I use Fibonacci not to determine what I'm going to do, buy or sell. I use it only to chart out a period of interest. So it can help me to tell, to tell me what other traders might be thinking to do at a particular period of time or level of price in the future. Because if we're using Fibonacci for the past, it's not really helping us. What we're trying to do is project where price action could go next. So if we're looking at ratios of where we were to where we've gone and where can we go after that is all what this is about. Um, you'll find in most stock a recurring level at 61.8%. You'll see it over and over and over again. This does not mean that that's the all end all. I have seen them go outside and up to the 50. I've seen the 78.6 and then you'll see a bounce off of that. A lot of times, you again, you have to take everything into consideration. You'll see that same type of pattern where it goes to that same percentage level over and over again. Meaning that if the markets are traded by algorithms, there could be some levels of algorithms programmed to do certain things at certain levels. It's just the way that they're programmed. And if we're following the way that big money is, is taking a stock in, or an index, index in a certain direction, we want to be aware of that. So I think the first thing and the thing I recommend everyone do is to go back as far as you can in history in the history of your of your chart and chart it, the Fibonacci's from that. So go to the monthly, go to 10 years, because you need to take the bigger picture into consideration and start to get a gauge of the algorithms and, and, and the buyers who are trading this actively, what are they thinking? So when you get to those certain particular key levels, at the 100 line, the zero line, uh, where it be the 61.8, whatever it would be, you're watching for action or activity at that particular level. And that's all you need to be doing. Um, this is not trading advice per se. I'm just saying, if you're looking at support and resistance, take these things into con consideration in conjunction with that. So I am a, a volume trader. I trade off of volume is king to me. I only look at Fibonacci to tell me if it co coincides with a particular level of consolidation and accumulation. And then I consider where it could go from there if it goes above or below. This way I'm never committed to, to being biased one direction or another. Um, so without further ado, let's kind of go to a longer term time frame on this. Um, I would rather, on AMD has been around for a while and I picked a ticker that I hope you guys are comfortable with. I think a lot of people are familiar with AMD and it's traded by a lot of individuals. So it's got a lot of volume there. So why would, why would AMD ever go to a particular place um, on the chart? Sorry, I keep getting the, the ding in my ears um, indicating that I've got some kind of alert going on here. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm going to go to a, let's do monthly. So from a technical perspective, why would AMD go from $1.61 to 100 bucks, you know, give or take? Well, fundamentally, you guys could do all the research in the world, but does this make sense technically from a trader standpoint? Um, that's what the Fibonacci is trying to tell us is where can it go? 
one of the first things that I would do, this is what they call on the Fibonacci's, if you pick it inside of thinkorswim, this is the retracement. A retracement means a move is already made. And what you're looking for is where it could go back to before it goes further. So you're literally doing that, retracing. So like, it's like if you ever lose your keys in your house, you got to go retrace your steps and go back to where you were until you find them. That's kind of what we're doing here. So you get to a certain point where shares are exhausted. The seller, uh, you know, the sellers are, they're done. Like the big money's been selling. The buying is exhausting. You can't buy anymore. We got to go back and recharge. So we're going to fall back to a certain level of what you could, you could call it support and test that area. Well, what's that area? I think that's what you're going to tend to find a 61.8% level on the retracement. Now, if we do the simple retracement, and then we'll get into extensions in a little bit, I'm just going to take it from the period low to the extreme period high. And one thing I will caution on any ticker ever. If you're setting a period low to a period high and you don't know that this is the ultimate high, which I just did, you're doing it wrong. The fact is, I don't know if AMD, if AMD is going to go higher or not. So I should not actually technically draw that level and start anticipating trying to buy it, you know, down in here somewhere. Um, in fact, in this case, you're going to go period high to period low. That's where it would trace, is actually from the period high to the period low. Anyway, it doesn't matter how you how you draw it. This area here is where you're going to end up trying wanting to buy uh, if it holds that support level. So anyway, if we take profit, if it if this ends up being the high, so if just bear with me here, if this is the ultimate high, it will never again see 9637, and it's all going to be profit taking from here. On the bigger picture, monthly candles over a period of years, this is ultimately going to test that 50 level again, 4878. Again, these things have to be true. That has to be the period low, which we know this has to be the period high. If it goes anything above this, it invalidates everything I just said. So strictly for the purpose of charting, I'm just going to assume that that's a period high. Say we knew it was. I'll leave it. This area is where you would typically see it test the 50. Anytime you get sideways consolidation in here, which is, can be very common, it will move around in this area for a while and then break out again. A lot of times you guys would refer to that as a pennant or something along those lines, okay? So everything has a specific name for it. It could go sideways forever, drop and come back up, or it could simply grind down into a flag and then break out again. But why does it do that? And why, do, why are those particular levels important? Because of this. If you look at what I did, I just took it from here to here, but look at the lines in between. That had absolutely nothing to do with me charting in between. I just simply took it from the period low to the period high. Look where it dropped back to repeatedly, right? It's moving around in this ratio area is all it's doing. Why would it jump up like this? Why would it go from here to here? Well, this was obviously a key area multiple times. See this right here, here, these candles. And when it finally decided it was going to break above, the moment it broke above this particular ratio level, it was off to the races. There wasn't any question as, where can it go? This was the next level in percentage wise. If you're trading Fibonacci here to here, you're not going to find a lot of resistance on something that's never been there before. So this is, again, all theory, but it kind of proves itself out in this particular case. So here we've gone and we've broken above. And the next candle just said, we're not going to get rejected off this level. It's just going to go up and try for the zero line. Again, I can draw the zero line because I know it already exists. So what would happen if I didn't know this zero line existed? I think that's a, a good question. So let's take what we knew to be true before this happened and see if this actually plays out at all. I'm going to do now what's called an extension. 
what an extension is, is to help to develop an idea of where it could go in the future. Now, a retracement is simply to help us gauge where it could go after, it's, after the move is already made. Well, that's all fine and good, but the extension is going to help try to give us an idea of where it could go after the move is already made, but into a future tense, not on the same, um, in the same ratio. So I don't want to get confusing because I'm actually, it sounds confusing in the way I said it. If I do from a period low to a period high, so say for instance, we're in 2016, I'm charting AMD. It's, it's really got a long period of consolidation here and I try to gauge where could it go and where would I take profit at? So if I had a period low to a period high and so far we're, we haven't even gotten into 2018 yet, I've, I, ha I now know that this is the period bottom. Why do I know that? Because this candle here broke above the prior period's highs. It's already tested and passed. Even though it rejected on it, it looks good to go. Where do I take profit? 61.8 is the typical norm. If you go beyond the 61.8 on retracements, that's when it's pulling back. A lot of times the market makers took too much profit. And it can end up failing all the way back to the 100 line. When you have the opposite here, where we're projecting out to the future, it's retracing if you're short, in theory. If you were short on AMD stock, you've taken a lot of pain here trying to remain short. You would definitely, uh, um, if you try to short it right at the 61.8, you got blown out, basically. Because all it did the next uh, month over, was just run right up past the 100 line all the way to the 161.8. Because uh, once it gets over the 100, this is a key area. You could kind of look at this as, I don't want to say support, but it's going to be an area of interest that could be a recurring theme in the future. Why? Simply because of the ratio, right? And anybody who's using the Fibonacci's um, as a point of interest is going to be placing trades at these key levels to buy and or sell. So when you're getting a volume profile, and if you guys like to use a volume profile, you notice it's never smooth, right? It's kind of got a lot of sort of like extensions that move out where it looks like a bunch of fingers moving out from the side. Um, I don't want to mess too much with a volume profile in here, but you would get the idea of you kind of see it doing this where more volume happens at certain areas and others, and then you have these gaps. Why do those gaps exist and why would you have more volumes at certain price levels than others? This has a lot to do with it. The Fibonacci's do. Um, you'll see it over and over and over again as you get uh, familiar with charting them from period low to period high, to period low. And once you have made a move and you've kind of gotten to where you uh, have set your targets, I would have taken profit on this candle, but when it broke above, you were good to get back in from Fibonacci theory to hold the 61.8 to break above the 100. So that would have been a trade that I, if I'm only using Fibonacci and no other thing to trade this, I would have taken this trade right here on this candle when it tested this candle and the 61.8. It's time to get in. My next level of selling is probably going to be up here, the $22.99 level. It went right through it, which is great. But it went actually to the 161.8 and even tested that twice over a two-month period before it pulled back. So now we have a period high. So I can actually do that again. This time, I've, I'm not going to go from this period low. I need to know from the period high how far back are we going to go? And we can already kind of see on this chart that I've already done, this Fibonacci, where it went. But this is old. I've already used it. If I want to leave it on there, you guys, you can because you'll see the ratios over and over again can matter. And when you get multiple um, time frames and multiple Fibonacci's that kind of overlap each other, like a very key zone overlaps with another key zone from a different time frame, you'll start to see more activity and volatility in that particular zone. So that being said, rather than 
fill this entire chart filled with Fibonacci's all over the place. I'm just going to make a rectangle in that key zone right in here. It's just going to be green. Okay. So that's a key zone for profit taking. And it's definitely one of consistent interest. I'm going to now remove this Fibonacci. 